Montauk in the east to Great Neck in the west. News about Long Island for the people of Long Island. 24 hours every day. This is News 12 Long Island. And now, the night edition. drives more than a dozen families from their homes. The blaze swept through a quorum apartment building. News 12's Matt Jablow was on the scene and is here now with more, Matt. Bill, it's likely the blaze was started by a barbecue, a barbecue that sent a number of July 4th celebrations up in smoke and left several quorum families homeless. The fire apparently started quickly and spread quickly. Eight fire companies responded from as far away as Yapank as the roaring blaze engaged the entire second floor of building four of the Brookwood Village apartments. I was first on the scene. I had major fire blowing out of the center of the roof. I had fire in the rear roof, and I had fire coming out of the front roof. The cause of the fire is still under investigation, though some residents immediately speculated that it was started by a barbecue on somebody's porch, a July 4th celebration possibly gone horribly awry. I was in the apartment with my husband, and I smelled smoke looked up, saw smoke, came outside, went, ran around the back of the building, and saw one of the partitions of the porch on fire. About 30 people were taken out of their buildings by firemen. Fortunately, there were no serious injuries. But on this holiday Monday, there are 16 heartbroken and homeless families. I was in the shower, and I heard people screaming. I grabbed my kids and left. And we went around the back, and we saw all the smoke. When I seen it start to come through the roof, I knew it was bad. I wasn't going back in. Almost all of the people displaced by the fire will be put up in vacant apartments at their complex. Fire officials, meanwhile, say they may know the cause of the fire as early as tomorrow. Bill, Melba? But as of now, I think it was somehow connected with a barbecue grill. Well, that's what we're hearing around the complex, but fire officials on the record will say nothing. Okay. Thanks, Matt. Well, 4th of July fireworks were the apparent cause of a fire that injured a Brooklyn couple. Firefighters rescued the woman as she was dangling from the 11th floor window of her apartment. Her husband is in critical but stable condition from burns and smoke inhalation. Fire officials say a bottle rocket apparently entered through a window, setting fire to their curtains and causing heavy damage to the apartment. A 10-year-old Inwood boy is in critical condition tonight after suffering third-degree burns from a fireworks mishap. Police say Michael Houck emptied out a large festival ball he found and burned his hand when he lit the powder. He's at the burn unit at Nassau County Medical Center after being flown there by helicopter. Sheikh Omar Abdel Rahman could one day be returned to Egypt, but tonight his son says the Sheikh doesn't want to go. The blind cleric was arrested Friday on immigration charges. He has also been linked to the suspects in the World Trade Center bombing and more recently to those accused in the plot to bomb several Manhattan targets. Egypt wants the sheikh extradited to stand charges of inciting riots there, but the sheikh's son says his father fears harassment in Egypt. The search for evidence in the case against accused serial killer Joel Rifkin is centered tonight in Rockland County. Rifkin has admitted killing 17 women in the New York area. Police believe he might have buried one of his victims in Nyack. State troopers spent today digging but found nothing. They will resume their search tomorrow. A New Jersey man is in critical but stable condition tonight after a violent stabbing. 17-year-old Halim Kasigas of East Patchogue was arraigned today on attempted murder charges. Police last Friday uh, say the teen attacked the victim and stole his car. The victim, Steve Dalton, was slashed in the throat and stomach. The prosecutor says he has a taped confession from the suspect, but the defense attorney wants to know why his client was held since last Friday. He's been in custody for over 30 hours, and now all of a sudden they have a video confession, a written confession, an oral confession, and all the uh, icing on the cake that they need. The question is, why wasn't he, pursuant to statute, brought to arraignment as quickly as possible? <clears throat> Casigas is being held on $500,000 cash bail. No charges are being filed in a tragic accident that took the life of an 18-month-old girl in Jamesport. Police say the child, Maggie Murphy, was killed when her father, Brandon Murphy, accidentally ran over her with the family van. It happened in the Murphy's driveway Saturday. Maggie Murphy was pronounced dead at an area hospital. A young girl from Springs who fought a courageous battle against cancer has died. 
Marsha Kulawaski was sick with acute leukemia for three years, and her fight made news throughout the area. Many entertainers joined the effort to try to find a bone marrow match for Marsha, but yesterday the five-year-old died at Children's Hospital in Boston. The money supporters raised to help Marsha will be used to help pay the Kulikowski family's million dollars in medical expenses. The 20-month-old baby girl who was found floating face down in a quorum swimming pool yesterday is clinging to life tonight. Lena Amalfitano was in the pool behind this house on Hudson Street when somehow she wandered into the water. Her father began CPR, but within minutes, a Suffolk police officer and a quorum firefighter came to the child's rescue. It was not breathing. It was a little blue. And uh, as we were doing CPR, we did uh, have water coming out of the, the baby's nose and mouth. We were restoring uh, life back into the child. The child did start to breathe, but was having difficulty breathing on its own. No one knows how long little Lena was in the water. She is in critical but stable condition tonight at Stony Brook Hospital. Coming up next on the night edition, a usually quiet Wheatley Heights neighborhood is disrupted by a grisly discovery. And a measure to protect the Pine Barrens is okayed by state lawmakers, but who's footing the bill? Also ahead, the East End tourist trade benefits from the warm weather. Stay tuned. Murder, shatterhood, and tonight area residents are wondering how that murder could have been committed on their street. News 12's Petra Schaefer has the story. Police suspect 26-year-old Michael Meredith spent his last living moments in this quiet Wheatley Heights neighborhood. That is, just before someone shot him in the head. He was found slumped over the driver's seat of a silver Thunderbird. There's uh, certain things uh, that lead us to believe that this might possibly be some kind of robbery, a robbery attempt. Some of the victim's uh, personal possessions are just outside the car. Police spent the afternoon searching the car and talking to neighbors. This woman did not find the body this morning, but she was around when another neighbor did. Her husband and her were looking. Then they ran, you know, right around the block again. And then within a couple of minutes, like 15 minutes, the cops arrived and she came back and then there was a whole crowd and they put out the tapes and stuff like that. Neighbors say there could have easily been a shooting in this normally quiet neighborhood last night and the reason is all over the ground today. Like many other neighborhoods in Long Island, there were a lot of firecrackers going off here last night. I don't know that with that, that gunshots could be distinguished from fireworks. But some say they're not surprised that the killer picked this spot on Hilltop Drive. So on occasions, they'd have people to come up here and they park their car down at the end of the block and they sit there quietly and have a beer or something like that. So um, I guess this would have been the ideal place if someone wanted to do something like this and then just walk away unnoticed. Neighbors say now they'll keep a more watchful eye on their street. In Wheatley Heights, Petra Schaefer, News 12, Long Island. Police say they have not yet recovered a murder weapon. He was reportedly selling more than just flea market merchandise. The owner of a Massapequa flea market booth was arrested yesterday for allegedly selling illegal weapons. Police say when they arrested Peter Scan of Queens, they rounded up blackjack, swords, and metal knuckles. If you find a suspicious-looking object, Nassau County police say call them. Don't do what a 44-year-old Baldwin man did. He found a pipe bomb on the dock at Tony's Marina near his boat yesterday and brought it to the police station. Lucky for him, it didn't go off. The bomb squad disposed of it. This holiday weekend wasn't exactly explosive on the roadways. Nassau County police say there was nothing unusual about their statistics since Friday night which show 41 DWI arrests in Nassau County. Suffolk County police, who report 67 DWI arrests, are checking on how those figures measure up to other years. Both counties reported the numbers of accidents for the weekend in the high 200s. And a Wontaw man was charged with boating while intoxicated when police officer towing water skiing equipment saw the man's boat ram into a pole marker in Goose Creek. Police arrested 30-year-old Bruce Burke. A bill to protect Suffolk's Pine Barrens has been passed by both houses of the state legislature, but legislation to pay for that protection is tied up in red tape as lawmakers prepare to go home. Here's more now from News 12's Patty Ann Brown. 
The Environmental Assistance Fund would set aside millions of dollars each year to be given to towns and counties across the state for specific environmental purposes. For example, part of the money would help local governments buy open space deemed important to the environment. It's this portion of the fund that Long Islanders are counting on to buy land from developers in parts of the Pine Barrens now protected under the newly passed Pine Barrens Bill. We either have to buy their property or we have to transfer their right to build someplace else. For that, we're going to need about $60 million. Towns could also tap into the fund to help pay for landfill closures and local recycling programs. Part of the fund would be set aside to help communities develop markets for the recyclable materials they collect. Another portion is for infrastructure projects like upgrades to sewage treatment plants that pollute the environment. But the legislature is caught up in debate on how to fund the fund. Governor Cuomo's original proposal was for a $270 million fund consisting of unclaimed bottle deposits already existing soda can and beer taxes, a $5 tire fee, and proceeds from a conservation license plate. But the state Senate opposes the governor's plan. The proposal passed by the Senate would take $100 million from the state's general fund. That plan is supported by state Senate Majority Leader Ralph Marino, but the Assembly and the governor oppose it. He says, uh, spend $100 million. I said, where are we going to get it? And he says, well, just take it out of the pot. I said, but the pot is spent on schools for Long Island. Do you want me to take it from there? Oh, no, 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 no. I said spent for state police. Do you want me to take it? Oh, no, 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 no. The Assembly has yet a third proposal. It's hoped that a compromise bill acceptable to all sides will be agreed to in the legislature's final hours. I believe that uh, the leaders are committed to the trust fund. They understand the importance not only uh, for the Pine Barrens, but also for the, um, the help to the local municipalities for solid waste and erosion. There's a chance that no environmental trust fund proposal will pass both houses of the legislature before the session ends. Environmental trust fund bills have been defeated for the past several years. If it happens again, the fund would be dead until next session. It would truly be a shame if the legislature left Albany again uh, for the third year in a row without bringing home a financial assistance package for Long Island's environment and for New York State's environment. Patty Ann Brown, News 12, Long Island. Lawmakers are hoping to wrap up in Albany sometime Tuesday. The state also is wrestling with rent control as a tenants group wants the governor to reject a weekend deal. The New York State Tenant and Neighborhood Coalition calls the bill unfair. The legislative agreement strips away rent protections on some apartments held by wealthy New Yorkers and Governor Cuomo says he will likely sign the bill. And key state lawmakers are said to agree on another measure. This one would ban smoking on school grounds, restrict smoking in the workplace. It would also make bingo halls and bowling alleys set aside separate rooms for smokers. The aim here is to curb exposure to secondhand smoke, which is said to be a cause of cancer in non-smokers. East End business owners are counting their profits tonight following a busy holiday weekend. As News 12's Connie Conway reports, this could be the best summer in years for East End merchants. It's music to merchants' ears, and it can be heard loud and clear this summer on the East End. Cash registers are full with tourist dollars, and for the first time in years, the sun gods appear to be shining on East End business owners. The weather has been great, which is really the key to a resort area. We have not had bad stretch of weather, and if it holds out, I think it's going to be probably the best year in four or five years out here. The East End was definitely the place to come to to escape the oppressive heat this weekend. But merchants we spoke to say that wasn't the only thing that was hot this weekend. Sales are up significantly higher over last year. So people not only spent the weekend here, they spent a lot of money. East Hampton merchants reported 25% increase in sales. One of the key indicators that we watch for uh, at the chamber is the number of shopping bags per person going down the block. And there was a lot of shopping bags this weekend going up and down the block. Sidewalks were nowhere near this full last year. And even tourist attractions couldn't lure visitors here because the weather was so lousy. I think the weather has everything to do with it. If the, the sun's not out, the people aren't going to come out. We get a lot of day trippers, and uh, it depends on the weather. Spending habits, though, vary almost as much as the number of places tourists are coming from. What may seem expensive to some, doesn't to others. 
I think that I've noticed more, and I hear that from my guests also this weekend, when we look at a lot of the prices, we find that they are extraordinarily high. And so things that might be attractive, we're just sort of saying, yes, they're really very nice, but we're walking away from. Not compared to New York City. <laughs> You know, it depends on where you're from, really, if this is expensive. Merchants here hope that kind of attitude means that at the end of this summer, they can finally bring home the bacon. In East Hampton, Connie Conway, News 12, Long Island. Well, the weather was good, and we continue on the night edition. Meteorologist Norm DeVoskin will be along to tell us what we can look for as we go back to work. Well, the great weather we had over the weekend will continue as high pressure builds over the area, but it's the worst kind of great weather because you have to go back to work. <laughs> Stay with us. I'll be right back with my full forecast. Melba, Bill? Okay, Norm, also ahead. Yesterday, the blimp fell from the sky. Today, authorities are trying to figure out why. Also, a Brookhaven business that takes your words and puts them in the air. In a moment. News 12 Long Island, 24 hours every day. When stress takes its toll, wouldn't it be great to have your very own personal masseuse to soothe and relieve tension? Therafex presents the Pro Shotsu Personal Massager, unlike vibrating massage. So what made a blimp tumble from the sky? It went down yesterday as thousands of New Yorkers looked on. The Pizza Hut airship crash-landed on top of a west side apartment building. The two-man crew were not seriously injured. The deflated ship is now at a federal facility where it will be examined. It is believed a structural pro problem is to blame. Mm -hmm. Well, it certainly was not a banner day for those blimp pilots, but uh, for Brookhaven business, that expression, a banner day, is taken literally. News 12's Hillary Strauss explains. It's a scene you know all too well. You're lying on the beach, hear the roar of an engine, when all of a sudden you look up at a banner advertisement on a plane. Did you ever wonder where it came from? Oftentimes from here. Island Aerial ads at Brookhaven Airport. With six planes flying 50 banners per day, high above a million and a half beachgoers, you can imagine these guys are pretty busy. Uh, the sign is laid out on the ground with a, uh, about a 250 foot rope. It's uh, set up between two poles. The planes fly by with a grappling hook at 80 miles an hour and pick the sign up. The banners advertise everything from champagne to movies to local news. And as you might imagine, some of the banner requests are on, well, the strange side. A uh, wife one time let his husband know that she was having a baby through the banner. She uh, wrote a sign that said, Frank, uh, the rabbits died. And, uh, it was pretty crazy. Calabro says the only problems arise when the weather is bad. In that situation, they use what's called the garbage can rule. If there are more garbage cans on the beach than beachgoers, then the banner waits to fly. In Brookhaven, Hillary Strauss, News 12, Long Island. Well, they look tough, but they've got heart. Hundreds of motorcycle riders toured the streets of Suffolk's North Shore to promote racial unity. The 25-mile trip was called the Ride the Rainbow Tour. The bikers made an open invitation to all colors and all ethnic groups to join the ride. They stopped at the Roxy Music Hall to talk, eat, and check out the other bikes. I think the most beautiful thing is that we're raising money for different benefits and we're paying our money to come and have fun and have a good time and go for a ride. Suffolk's finest is here, escorting us the whole entire way. And it's great to be part of the society. The tour was sponsored by New Horizon Insurance in Smithtown. Well, it was a great day for a bike ride. and It was a really nice day, but it was hot. You know, I was out in the middle of the day, and I was talking to a mad dog and an Englishman. Exactly. It really, <laughs> yes, it was really hot out there. Temperatures getting close to 90 degrees in many places across Long Island. And we have the report from many of the observers around the island, including some airports. Kim Hicks had a high of 80 degrees. That's warm for Montauk. So it was quite warm across the island. Helen Proud, Oregon, 84 degrees. West Hampton Airport, 82. Dick Simmons and Center each had an 87 for a high. Islip Airport, 83. The normal high is 80 degrees, so you can see we're quite a bit above normal in most places. Gary Stone, a high of 89 at Centerport, 
83 for Walter Dibbins in Massapequa. Thank you, observers. That was a, quite a report and a very hot day. We have high pressure across the East Coast, and that is keeping that storm system sitting along the, the uh, Mississippi River with heavy thunderstorms out to the west. It will not buck this really big high pressure system that is sitting right along the coast. There's a little warm, uh, warm front that will move across sometime tomorrow. Uh, no precipitation, no clouds, just a shift in wind, bringing in some southerly winds across the region for Wednesday and the rest of the work week and look for increasing humidity coming out of the Gulf of Mexico as high pressure will be in control and that is called a Bermuda high and that occurs in the summertime so we'll have some hot and humid conditions across the region there are the showers way out to the west associated with that front bringing rain to areas that do not or do not need any more rain uh, and that is very unfortunate right in our area right now we have high pressure really clear skies just beautiful as we have this uh, clear skies all across the northeast. For, so for overnight, clear skies, temperatures 64 to 69 degrees. If you're headed to the beach on Tuesday, really looks good. If you take into account temperature, wind and cloud cover, a 10 on a scale of 10, you couldn't ask for a nicer day to go to the beach. For the Mariners, winds on the waters will be out of the south, southeast at 7 to 14 knots. Seas less than a foot on the sound, one, two to three on the ocean. Visibility good, except for a little haze. Water temperature 68 degrees, and later in the news, I'll be telling you about the work week. Stay with us. Hey, Melba. Charge. So, what's left? Chemical Bank MasterCard. If you have one, use it. If not, call 1-800-